In the words of the late Dr. Magnus Clark, G'day Hardcore Australians, good evening everyone else. This is Cherry Pizza once again taking on a journey over, above, to and through the land of Oz, as told through its many cinematic retellings over the years. This time around I have something a little bit different for you, and I dare say how much you enjoy it will be in direct proportion to how much you can lap up its, ooh, let's say, special qualities. So, to set the scene, it was 1976. The time had well and truly come for playing up the multiple uses of the name Oz, both as Dorothy's magical lad and a nickname for Australia. So lo and behold, it's an Oz movie set in Australia called simply Oz. Unless you happen to live in the USA, a country which seems allergic to the original titles of international movies, in which case you'd know it as 20th Century Oz. Now, before I go on, I should point out, the movie also has the subtitle, A Rock and Roll Road Movie. For my money, it's a worthy inclusion, because over the years, whenever I've introduced somebody to this film, I've always told them, if you're struggling to enjoy an Oz retelling, remind yourself that you're watching a rock and roll road movie. If you're struggling to enjoy a rock and roll road movie, remind yourself that you're watching an Oz retelling. Now, before I talk about the movie, the other thing I want to put out there is it's always been a sore point for me when the masses seem to think that one interpretation of a work, often a movie interpretation, is the definitive version of something. A lot of people don't realise the Grimm brothers never named the Seven Dwarfs and that Sleepy, Happy, Grumpy, Dopey, Sneezy, Bashful and Doc were purely a Disney creation. Yes, Roald Dahl's Oompa Loompas did sing, but their songs didn't start with the words Oompa Loompa Loompa de doo I've got another puzzle for you. And there are many aspects of the 1939 MGM Wizard of Oz, as delightful a movie as it is, that simply didn't exist in L. Frank Baum's original books. Now, there is no question this movie is not a retelling of any of those books. It's a reimagining of that 1939 Judy Garland spectacle, and yes, I get it. When your movie's not exactly big budget or Shakespearean art, you're making it for the masses, it is a call you have to make. And on that note, let's get into it. In this Oz, Kansas is a dreary country town where the height of excitement is spending your Saturday night at the local hall with the aspiring rock stars. characters be blessed with name, and her life clearly has meaning by being the band's groupie. And yes, the local guys have their intentions worn proudly on their sleeves. Hey, uh, you want to dance? No, she doesn't. Who is the band? Band Miles. Yes, this was the 1970s. Yes, this is a small and unenlightened country town. Yes, I'd like to believe that such thought processes are absent from men today, but let's just change that subject. And you can't have a retelling of the 1939 movie without foreshadowing what these characters are going to become in the mystical parallel world. So... I reckon Wally's a bloody good singer. Oh, what would you know, Jongo? You can't even hear when you're out of tune. When we get home. Jesus, what's the road with you, man? What are you trying to do? Scare me to death? Hey! Where do you get taken that? Put the bloody thing back. Your group sounds pretty good. Have you made any records or anything yet? Oh, we've had offers, you know. TV and all that. But we don't want to be exploited, see? So we're waiting for the ride off. This movie's Cyclone, a little road mishap. Yes, Dorothy awakens in a strange new place. Now, take one look at the name of the shop that Dorothy's entering. Take one look at the merchandise that has her enamoured, and you can pretty much see where this is going. So, let's skip to the plot points. I suppose you know you caused quite a stir around here. Me? Yes, since you killed the town hood. What? 
Ben geçiyorum. I wouldn't worry too much if I were you. Of course, this is the 1970s, so I have no idea whether this character is supposed to be celebrating or mocking the gay community, but the good fairy, Glyn, <laughs> get it, insists on gifting Dorothy the sequin shoes with all the powers they apparently hold. As I've said before, this movie relies on people's Oz knowledge coming entirely from the 1939 movie. The famous ruby slippers were an MGM creation. In L. Frank Baum's original novel, they were silver shoes. Yes, they belonged to the Wicked Witch of the East. Yes, they were gifted to Dorothy by the Good Witch of the North. However, in the novel, the Good Witch of the North is not Glinda. She is the Good Witch of the South. She doesn't appear in the novel until much later, towards the end, when Dorothy and her friends visit her, asking for help to send Dorothy home. Glinda tells her about the power of the shoes. So lo and behold, in the novel, it makes sense that Dorothy isn't sent home straight away. It's a different witch who gives her the shoes from the one who tells her about the power. And yes, Dorothy does click her heels together three times, but she never says there's no place like home. All she has to do is tell the shoes where she wants to go, take three steps, and she's there. So, back to this movie. There are two things Dorothy needs to justify the story. One is an antagonist, a wicked witch of sorts. Remember that bouncer from the hall? Yep, he's here as well. Can I help you? Shut up, fairy. It's her I want. You'll leave her alone if you know what's good for you. You killed me, brother. I'm going to make you real sorry you did that. But I didn't kill anyone. He's dead, and I'm going to get you for it. Maybe we should play that again just to get the full intensity of his emotion. He's dead, and I'm gonna get you for it. I don't know whether to predict he was the ducks of the mumble and scratch approach at acting school, or he, um, didn't go to acting school. Either way, I wouldn't be going to make either prediction in his presence, so, yeah, love your work, dude. The second thing she needs is a journey, a mission, some special enlightenment to seek. And this comes in the form of a poster in Glynn's shop for a glam rock singer called The Wizard. He's playing in Melbourne that night, or as they call it, the city, like Emerald City without the Emerald part, doing his last show ever. Of course, Dorothy needs to see him. Now, there are no yellow bricks on the road she'll be travelling, but there are some special friends she'll be meeting along the way. Friend one is none other than the bass player from Wally and the Falcons. In this parallel world, he's a slow-witted surfer whose car has broken down on the side of the road. Where are you headed? I haven't made up my mind. You're a long way from the surf, aren't you? Yeah. I will, uh... I just follow the highway, you know? Stop when I hit the beach. Ever tried using a map? Nah, it's too much hassle. You work? Sometimes. I need the dough. I like to keep moving, you know? You won't get far using a jack like that. What do you mean? He does get referred to as Blondie, but is credited only as Surfy. After Dorothy helps him out, she's blessed with a travelling companion, which I am sure she loves, yeah. despite his struggles to function in the world away from the waves. What would you like? Just one solo, right? What do you got to eat? It's fish and chips or hamburgers. Could I have a... That's <laughs> left your bread in the wagon. But you can't question his value to her. Do you think we can move now? Sure, I'll just pay for the uh, drink. Oh, oh, I promise for that. It's plain. 
plastic. Come on, let's get out of here. When it's time to get petrol, the drummer from the band appears as friend too. I use the word friend very loosely here. Oh, uh, two dollars a super, thanks, man. He's referred to as Greaseball, but credited only as Mechanic. No, he doesn't have a heart, but he has a lot of ruthless libido. Are you are Sheila? No, I picked her up. She was hitching. Oh, yeah. Listen, knackers. I'm about to shoot through for the day, see? And I, uh, wouldn't mind a drive to the city. So uh, I'll give the shooter a lift from here on if you want to piss off and go surfing or something. And just as the journey looks set to continue with the mechanic, come on, are you seeing a pattern yet? In rides the guitarist from the band. He is referred to as Killer, but is only credited as Biking. Look carefully and you'll see a Lion logo on the back of his jacket. Follow him into the bathroom, you'll soon discover he's not as brave or courageous as he makes out. Did I frighten you? What do you mean? Nobody frightens me, chick. Maybe you can't read, but you're in the lane. So what? Nobody tells a chill where he can shit. Well, you'll have to put up with my cup, little. It's a free country. How do you know I want to in? You just try it, love, and I'll smash your pretty face in for you. Yeah? Yeah. You're pretty good at pushing chicks around, aren't you? What'd you do that for? I didn't even touch her. And after a deep discussion about his struggles with masculinity and three male egos fighting to be the gallant gentleman who accompanies her into the city, we know everything we need to know. We get the concept. We see the parallels to the Oz characters. Great. Let's just jump forward about half an hour. So Dorothy has made it into the city and she's searching madly for a way to see the wizard. So why not just show up at the theatre without a ticket? Oh, I haven't missed the wizard. It's too much stage right now. Have you got your ticket? No, how much is it? If you haven't got a ticket, I can't let you in. Well, I want to buy one. You must be joking. Tickets for this show sold out days ago. Miles to see the wizard? Sorry, nobody gets in without a ticket. Maybe we could come to some sort of. you know? What are you doing later on? Nothing special. I'll meet you after the show. changed our minds many times as to whether this movie is supposed to be giving us hearty chuckles or judgmental groans, but one thing we know for sure, there are a couple of plot points we really need to get resolved. Let's answer two questions at once. What of Dorothy's nemesis who's been following her in his truck the whole movie? What about those red sequin shoes? What special powers do they have? Well, with everything you already know, you can guess he's not going to be inviting her to his hotel room after the show for a game of Scrabble, right? All right, I'll just have to do it for you then, won't I? Don't come near me. I'll scream. Won't do you no good. You buggers again. So she's an uplifted woman with a sense of triumph. What more could she need? Well, 
one last encounter with the wizard, of course. So after very conveniently finding her way to his hotel room, she encounters the man behind the curtain, where one of the movie's deepest revelations will occur. Driving me insane. Why don't you learn to sing? Who are you? I'm sorry. I just had to see you. People pay to see me on stage, not my bloody bathroom. What would you expect, some kind of Superman or something? No, I... You did, didn't you? Well, well. You're a fast worker, aren't you? I'd be looking everywhere for you. Why aren't you out there with your people? We can't afford any unfavorable publicity. Get lost. Don't you tell me to get lost. Fix your face, get some gear on and get out there, will you? Will I see you again? Yeah, sure. But I'll be a bit rushed for a week or so. Leave your number on the pad. Sorry, dear. But there's thousands of you and only one wizard. And with that, there's nothing left to do but express your last great epiphany and be transported to the simple life back home. Here it comes. The Declaration of Declarations. Friends is Oz. Not deep and meaningful, but not impossible to enjoy when you're in the right mood for it. As I said at the start, it plays up both definitions of Oz. It might not be the greatest depiction of this country, but for my money, I think it has a better job than a certain Baz Luhrmann movie with a similar title. And until next time, this is Cherry Pizza saying stay happy, stay healthy, and have a lovely what's a name.